Hi, welcome to the world of neural pruning. I am Mahesh, your physics teacher. See, physics in science, you know, we separated physics because if you look around any object like mobile phone, television, refrigerator, bulb, light, missiles, bombs, automobiles like cars, bikes, everything, it's based on laws of physics. Means to understand about the modern world and to know about each and every device what we are using, we should know the laws of physics and why physics is very essential to our life. So what is physics? Physics means it's a branch of science which mainly deals with the motion and energy. Means the materials what we are using it's all based on law of conservation of energy. We are converting one form of energy into another form with the help of so many devices. See, when I just finished my masters in 2011 from Bangalore University, I got gold medal in nuclear physics, but I decided to continue my further career in teaching because it's the only place where we can share our knowledge to the students. Now we'll discuss about the electricity because almost all the instruments they're working on the basis of electricity. The materials are classified into three groups on the basis of conductivity, conductors, insulators and semiconductors. Conductors, they conduct electricity due to the presence of free electrons. Here electrons are the charge carriers, means they move from one end to the other end if we supply potential difference across the ends of the conductor. Example, all the metals. If I say insulator, insulator, there will be no free charge carriers and hence that insulator will never conduct electricity. Semiconductor, it will have both conductor properties as well as the properties of insulator means it depends on the temperature. If temperature is very less, that material acts as an insulator. Because at a very low temperature, there will be no free charge carriers. As temperature increases, that bond between the electrons, valence electrons, breaks and it behaves as a conductor. Few will think physics is difficult because so many terms are there in physics. But it's a really interesting and every day we use the same terms. The main problem is we don't know what exactly the difference between the different terms we are using. Like mass, weight, speed, velocity. What is acceleration? What is power? What is pressure? All these things. If it is distance and displacement, both are not same. Do you think distance is equals to displacement all the time? No, it's not possible. Distance means the total path Suppose if you start from your house and if you go to your friend's house and then to some other place, then to school, 
This is a total distance. Means total path covered by an object. Displacement is shortest path. Means from your house to school. Here displacement is the shortest path. It depends on the direction. But distance is just the total path. Means distance is a scalar quantity displacement is a vector quantity now you think about speed and velocity speed i'll just tell you speed is a scalar quantity velocity is a vector quantity now you relate speed and velocity to the distance and displacement speed distance by time means the distance traveled by time taken is speed. Displacement by time is velocity. So now it's easy. Speed is scalar quantity. Distance by time. Velocity is a vector quantity. What is acceleration then? Acceleration is also a vector quantity. If velocity changes with respect to time, if I increase the velocity with time, or if I decrease the velocity with time, then it is acceleration. If I increase velocity with time, is acceleration. If I decrease with time, that is deceleration, means negative acceleration. So what is force? Force is an external agent which changes the state of an object or it changes the position of an object or it changes the direction of motion of the object or it changes the velocity of an object. What is pressure? You just think, what is pressure? Pressure is force applied on a unit area of an object. If I consider it's an object, how much amount of force is applied on that area? That is pressure. What is power? See, think about the power, work done. These two are important. Power is how much work is done in a given time. Work done by time is power. What is work done? That force into displacement means how much amount of force is applied to displace an object from one position to another position that is work done so work done is force into displacement so power is equals to work done by time see you may wonder how object is charged and what are the methods to charge a given object See, suppose if you have one neutrally charged body. What is neutrally charged body? There will be equal number of positive charges and negative charges. Neutral means there will be charges, but equal number of positive and negative charges. How to make that neutrally charged body to be charged, like positively charged or negatively charged? We have three methods to charge a neutrally charged body. One is by conduction. Other one is charging by induction. And third one is charging by friction. Now there is a just simple question for you. You know the reason for lightning and thundering. Do you think the exact reason for the lightning and thundering and why why that electric discharge is happening between the two charged clouds it's because of charging by induction now we'll discuss about charging by conduction by induction and charging by friction now Look at the two objects. This is charged body. More number of positive charges. Means it's a positively charged body. 
it's a neutrally charged means equal number of positive and negative charges but I told you we can make this neutrally charged body to a charged body using conduction means if I connect these two charged bodies means one is neutral charged body other one is charged body the flow of charges takes place from charged body to uncharged body and that flow continues till the charges becomes equal you see here now there are four positively charged particles and here also four positively charged particles now this neutrally charged body it behaves as a positively charged body it means when uncharged body it comes in contact with the charged body that uncharged body also behaves as a charged body so this is charging by conduction now we'll discuss about charging by induction means how to charge uncharged body using a method called induction first I'll tell you what is induction see when uncharged body uncharged body when they're very close to each other but they should not be in contact when they're very close to each other opposite charges in uncharged body will come and collect to the surface very close to the charged body and the same charges will reach to the opposite end if you connect that opposite end to the ground we can send all that charges to the ground and this entire object behaves as oppositely charged body listen how it is possible see it's a positively charged body why it is positively charged here there are four positive charges and only two negative charges since there are more positive charges it is positively charged body and this one neutrally charged because there are equal number of positive and negative charges if I bring these two charge bodies very close to each other now look at this diagram opposite charges in this neutrally charged body means negative charges all these negative charges they are very close to the charged body and same charges are at the opposite end now this end is connected to the ground means all these positive charges will reach to the earth now this neutral body it will have only negative charges and it behaves as a negatively charged body charging by induction that neutrally charged body gets opposite charges as charged body it's just like in clouds when two charged clouds they come very close to each other all the charges will accumulate on the surface of the clouds and that electric field increases if electric field increases and once it will reach to the maximum value air molecules it loses its insulating property see here air is an insulator but between the two clouds when clouds are very close to each other air it loses its insulating property and the charges they move from one cloud to the other cloud that's the reason for that lightning and thundering so that lightning and thundering is due to charging by induction next method is charging by friction what is friction you know about friction because without friction we can't walk we can't run we can't jump we can't do any other activities friction means force 
which opposes the motion of an object and friction is possible when two objects are in contact. Here how we can charge uncharged body using friction. See if you rub any two uncharged bodies, if you rub two bodies then the movement of charges takes place from one body to another body. Best example you take comb and rub it with against hair. The flow of charges takes place from comb to hair and both gets charged. That is charging by friction.